Have you ever paused to consider the remarkable alignment of circumstances that not only allow life on Earth, but also enable us to probe the mysteries of the cosmos? This question brings us face to face with two competing viewpoints, the Copernican Principle and the Privileged Planet Thesis. The Copernican Principle, named after the 16th century Polish astronomer Nicolas Copernicus, holds that humans are not privileged observers of the universe. As Wikipedia states, the Copernican Principle states that humans, on the Earth or in the solar system, are not privileged observers of the universe, that observations from the Earth are representative of observations from the average position in the universe. In other words, the observations we make from here on Earth are held to be representative of what any other observer would see from an average position in the universe. Contradicting the Copernican principle, the privileged planet thesis, as put forth by astronomer Guillermo González, argues that the conditions that allow us to exist also provide us with the best overall conditions for making scientific discoveries. For example, González points out that Earth, the one place that has observers, also happens to be the place that experiences perfect solar eclipses. These eclipses are not just visually stunning phenomena, they have been instrumental in advancing our understanding of the universe. The confirmation of Einstein's general relativity, for example, was made possible by observations during a solar eclipse. On page 18 of his book, González adds another layer to the argument. He states, There is a final, even more bizarre twist. Because of moon-induced tides, the moon is gradually receding from Earth at 3.82 cm per year, in 10 million years will seem noticeably smaller. At the same time, the sun's apparent girth has been swelling by 6 cm per year for ages, as is normal in stellar evolution. These two processes, working together, should end total solar eclipses in about 250 million years, a mere 5% of the age of the Earth. This relatively small window of opportunity also happens to coincide with the existence of intelligent life. Put another way, the most habitable place in the solar system yields the best view of solar eclipses just when observers can best appreciate them. The privileged planet thesis extends beyond perfect solar eclipses. In the 2016 article titled, No Moon, No Magnetic Field, No Life on Earth, it is revealed that the gravitational push-pull of the moon on iron deep inside Earth keeps it hot and molten, and a liquid core is needed to generate a magnetic field which forms a protective shield against blasts of particles from the Sun. The Earth-Moon system also contributes to the dynamical stability of the inner solar system, including the orbits of Venus and Mercury, and without stable orbits, human life would be impossible. Even our location within the universe seems to suggest a privileged position. We reside in a peculiarly empty region of space, providing an unobstructed view of the cosmos, Furthermore, as Lawrence Krauss revealed, we exist at the right time in cosmic history to observe the cosmic background radiation, an echo of the universe's birth. Future civilizations, due to the expansion of the universe, may never have the opportunity to study this cosmic relic. Moreover, in his 2016 paper, The Fine-Tuning for Discoverability, Dr. Robin Collins and building off the overall privileged planet thesis, predicted and confirmed that the cosmic microwave background, CMB, is such as to maximize the intensity of the CMB as observed by typical observers. On top of that, in the video, Thought Crime, The Conspiracy to Stop the Principle, Max Tegmark reveals that there are anomalies in the temperature variations of the CMB that line up with the Earth and solar system. Anomalies that, very unexpectedly, give the Earth and solar system a central location in the universe. As if that was not surprising enough, in the Privileged Planet video it was also revealed that these specific frequencies of light that enable plants to manufacture food and astronomers to observe the cosmos represent less than one trillionth of a trillionth of the universe's entire range of electromagnetic emissions. In conclusion, the Privileged Planet thesis presents a compelling case that our existence and our ability to observe the universe seem to be shaped by a series of extremely fortuitous circumstances. 
extremely fortuitous circumstances which by all rights, turn the Copernican principle on its head, and reveal that we inhabit a privileged position within the universe. These findings challenge us to question our supposed insignificance in the cosmic scheme of things. Challenge us to severely question the late Stephen Hawking's rather bleak assertion, via the Copernican principle, that, the human race is just a chemical scum on a moderate-sized planet, orbiting around a very average star in the outer suburb of one among a hundred billion galaxies. Contrary to what Hawking and other scientists may believe, the scientific evidence itself is pointing in a very different direction than what the Copernican principle has led them to believe about man's place in the cosmos.